Welcome to The Music Reel. I'm your host, Nicola Burton. Today, I have the very, very nice pleasure of speaking with the federal member for McNamara, Mr. Josh Burns, MP. Josh, it is a pleasure to meet you. Nikki, it's, it's cool to be on. Thanks for asking me. Uh, look, it's, it's, I've loved seeing what you and Ben Steele did with Arts in Lockdown. So let's start there. So Ben Steele, the, uh, the producer for the documentary The Show Must Go On, has joined forces with you and you've come up with Arts in Lockdown. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came about and I, I guess what the response has been so far? Sure. Well, um, let's, let's, go back, let's go back at one step and rewind and just to give you, to give you some context about, about my involvement in the arts community as well. Um, it, it is certainly, Nikki, not because I have any great talent in the arts myself. I have to, I, that is a confession. I, I, I did, I did um, get in a little bit involved in high school musicals and I, I, I bought a keyboard during the coronavirus lockdown to try and look, teach myself, but I can assure you I have zero talent, unlike the fantastic Ben Steele. But anyway, um, but but my my electorate of McNamara, which um, some of your listeners may uh, may or may not be familiar with, because it's a new electorate. It goes basically from the Yarra River in Melbourne, so from the edge of the city, all the way down through Port Melbourne, and then across the beach along the the, the bay um, into St Kilda, which is obviously a huge um, artistic community, and then in towards Caulfield, which is where I, I live and grow up grew up. Um, but it also has the art centre, the Re Melbourne Recital Centre, um, all of all, basically the ABC. It has this huge arts hub of Melbourne. Um, so between South Bank and St Kilda and everything in between, it, it really is probably the, the arts capital of the country, um, let alone let alone um, Melbourne. And and so I we estimate about one in ten workers in my electorate work in, in the arts or in the creative industries. And they have just been absolutely smashed by this coronavirus. And it's, you know, it's, I mean, the, the two parts of this is, one is that it's history that we're living through, that this coronavirus is history. And, it, and, it's, and it's, you know, it's, it's a dramatic story and a dramatic part of our, our country's story during this period. And arts have been the thing that's helped us cope with this. You know, when you're at home and you you know you look to you look to the arts to try and to try and you know get through the days. Um, but but for for my electorate, it's also the jobs and and this is the livelihoods and this is you know it's that these people that they they are they are artists and they are creative workers and work in the creative industries. And and Ben Ben's no different. Ben's a filmmaker and um, he reached out to me just on email one day and. And said, you know, I'm a filmmaker. I'm local, and and I'm, you know, I'm really struggling like the rest of, of of the sector. And um, I said, well, let's let's have a let's have a phone conversation. Let's have a chat, and um, and we did. And yeah, he was he was describing Nikki the feeling that I think is quite prevalent, which which arts in lockdown kind of captures is sort of this sense of 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 helplessness in many ways, and 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 sadness. But it's not. It's not just that. Um, it's not just that artists have have you know had their livelihoods taken away. That for many artists as well, you know, art has this appeal of of um, of the sorts of work that they that artists want to do, and it, and it feels right for artists to 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 be artists, and it feels you know it, it, it helps create their sense of self and confidence and well-being and to take all of that away isn't just about the money it's also about what's going on um as as people so so ben and i were sort of chatting about this and i said to ben um sorry my 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 zoom just froze <laughs> um i said to ben why don't why don't you make a film about it you know do it um do it and and do it about the people in my electorate and about my 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 local artists and and he said sure so that's that's sort of how how it was i have to say that that i cannot take any credit for the actual film i mean that was that was all ben and he's he is brilliant and he was a, really a joy to work with and and like all good producing commissioners or whatever you want to call me throughout the the thing i meddled in in it more than I should have, Nikki. Um, but um, 
but I, you know, I, 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 he was very gracious with, with, um, with my feedback and, and, and with my, my suggestions and, and also some of the parameters that I, I wanted to work in. But ultimately, this is his film and, um, and he did a, a wonderful job. And for those who haven't seen it, it's, it's a short film that's really about, about what it's been like as an artist in lockdown and what's it been like for someone in lockdown um, who, who in that first press conference where the Prime Minister basically took away, you know, took away any gathering of over 500 people, um, within five minutes, you know, six months, 12 months of work disappeared in an instant. And what's it been like to process that? But also that next layer down of, of the people who work in, in creative jobs. And we, we had one um, wonderful um, woman who, who runs a small dance studio and artists and crew and um, of, of, you know, of big events. So it, it you know, it was, it was a great snapshot into the what's what people are experiencing and he did a beautiful job and the people who participated were, were, were so honest and raw in, in their experiences and um, and I think that the reaction as a result was was pretty extraordinary we had it sort of went viral o- online and um, and hundreds and hundreds of people shared it Nikki and and hopefully it, it, it continues to spark a conversation about about what artists in lockdown are going through as this conversation is all about well it's so good josh that you actually um supported him because i think it's probably what he needed to you know the impetus to get that project to happen because that's the real thing we're dealing with it's the mental health i mean obviously the economy of course but then the ensuing mental health challenges that we're going to have as a result because we don't have um so obviously job keeper changed this week A lot of people didn't even get JobKeeper. Mm. Um, Pubs and clubs are typically the main employer of of music, musicians anyway. Um, They've got restrictions covering them. So with JobKeeper restricted, the revenue hasn't returned, there's no light at the end of the tunnel, you can understand why this industry is like, well, um, what about us? What are we going to do? Um, And I'm not sure if you're aware, but the Australian Live Music Business Council announced last week that 70% of our music businesses will be gone in six months. So mm. that's an enormous, like it's almost like an extin- extinction level event that we're facing. What are your thoughts? I mean, obviously with your consti- constituents, but across our country, what are your thoughts for us in how we can actually survive this? Nikki, it's a really, I mean, we, it's a really important point. I, I, I think... I think when, when, when dealing with policy of how to support industry, that's not just about the arts or artists, even more, take, take it even a step back and, go, and look at this picture more broadly. What governments have asked of people is to, is to follow health restrictions and follow health advice because, because if we don't, the amount of transmission of this virus will get out of hand and we won't be able to treat people um, in hospitals and give people, you know, a, a sporting chance at, at living. And, and we saw that in places in the early days of this pandemic in, you know, in really wealthy developed parts of the world, like in Lombardy in Northern Italy and, um, and other places where they were triaging people out of hospitals and couldn't treat them because of this pandemic. So government has basically said to, to industry and to businesses, you know, you, ne- you need to follow the rules of, of the pandemic or of the, of the health advice and of the health authorities. Um, and then what we were arguing from the very beginning was, well, if you're going to do that, you need to support businesses to be able to survive this, this pandemic, is that businesses and people are doing the right thing by not having underground gatherings or by not, you know, by not refusing to people, Australians on the whole, certainly in comparison to United States and other countries have been very, very compliant with, with the guidelines. And I think that the principle therefore has to be that government finds a way to support people throughout, throughout the, their um, pandemic, because if people aren't doing the right thing, or if, or if this virus does get out of hand, as we've seen in my home state of Victoria, very, very quickly within, within days, this thing can become too slippery. So my, my position and the position of the Labor Party has always been that we need to follow the advice of our health experts and therefore we need to be supporting people in order for them to be able to do that. And that, you know, we can't be having people 
being kicked out of their homes. We can't be having people living in poverty. We can't be having businesses um, not being able to pay their employees. That's what the job keeper and job seeker was all about. Now, in, in other parts of the country, you know, where we are seeing some return to um, some return to venues, you know, it needs to be, I understand the staggered approach of coming out of these policies. Um, but, but the reality is, is in Victoria, we're still in lockdown. There are still only four reasons for which we can leave our home. And, and in my electorate, in, in, you know, where, where we have the venues and, and as you say, the pubs, uh, I mean, we don't even have, we don't even have dine-in options for, um, for eating at the moment. It's, it's, it's absolutely impossible for businesses to survive without government help. So I think that the decision to, I exclude people from the arts and entertainment industry from the job keeper in the first place was, was unfortunate and, and incorrect. I mean, it's the very nature of those in the arts and entertainment sector that it's, it's short term project work often, and it's not, it's not long term work. And you're often going from project to project. And that's, the difficulty of for many artists financially to survive, but even more so in the coronavirus. So, so that's the first thing. And the second thing um, would be to, to maintain it at the, at the rates in which we're not driving people back to poverty. Um, and I think that, I think that unfortunately, um, we're, we're, you know, especially in Victoria and each state and territory is different, but I know that they're really, I mean, it's just, it's, it's dire at the moment in Victoria from a, from a venue and from a um, live music and a live theatre um, point of view. It's, it's just impossible. And it's, you know, as we know, it's much, much harder to, to raise um, and to make money online. There's a lot of content online and, and it's, you know, it's very difficult. It's much, you know, it's much more of a proven business model for businesses and for musicians and for artists to, to sell tickets and, and to to get crowds, um, but but you know that that's been really hard. I, I so so that's that's the first bit, and the second bit is well, given given there are some industries that are to be honest thriving throughout this pandemic because there has been less restaurants and less um, you know less dine-ins and less um, you know going to the pub and having a meal there. Um, supermarkets and food supply chains and other food supply chains and local food supply chains have done pretty well out of this. People are cooking more at home. You know, people are making more sourdough at home, Nikki, and and uh, and it's you know it's been quite good. But but artists and entertainers, as we know, have been in the opposite side. There, there has really been very limited revenue um, that's been funneled towards artists and entertainers as a result of this coronavirus. Um, so, so, you know, for a while there, we were asking for an industry specific package that, that looked at both, you know, all of the different parts of the sector. But, you know, I, I think it was June that the prime minister did a press conference with Guy Sebastian and, and a few others, even, I think it was at a, at a live music venue. And then a month later, that venue went and did, I think, current affairs or the project or one of those shows. And, was talking about how not even the, 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 the company that the Prime Minister did the press conference with ended up getting any support. So I, I think that the first amount of actual support from the $250 million announcement comes out in November. I, don't, I think people have been applying for that. And depending on what industry you're in, whether you're in live music or whether you're in theatre or film or um, visual arts or whatever, whatever your industry, you know, you may or may not be eligible for some of the grants but the fact that businesses have been trying to survive this entire time without anything has been really hard we know that the australia council needs funding restored we know that 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 um that that over over successive years there hasn't been enough funding for the australia council and for other other government agencies that that have been supporting industry so look ultimately it's it's been about a few big key government decisions that have really, unfortunately, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, targeted the arts and entertainment sector. And that's been the, the denial of JobKeeper, the cutting of JobKeeper too early and JobSeeker too early, as well as the, the inability for this package of, of tailored um, grants to actually be paid out by the federal government. So We've seen some good stuff from from um, state governments, but really, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's it's been very difficult for artists to compound all of that. 
Oh, 100 percent. And and it's I think from what you're saying, really the solution is to maintain job keeper and job seeker until full capacity is returned because there's no ability for us to make money otherwise. So there's no point in penalizing this industry because they can't work because of the restrictions of the government. So that kind of doesn't make sense. But I, I'm glad that you brought up uh, information about the grants. It's um, a system that is, um, and I'm not sure if anyone's given you this feedback. Most people uh, get rejected from their grant applications. It's not very transparent. It's, there's no appeal process. So to me, that doesn't really make sense as a mechanism to assist this industry. Do you think there's a better alternative, Josh? What, what, the, the, there's a couple of things to say about that. Um, that, that over successive attempts, the government has taken away more and more control from the Australia Council. And, and, and the Australia Council has been working with less and less as well. So, so for example, I have a, um, a small theatre company in my electorate, which basically, Nikki, I mean, it, it, this is, this is, they are such a modest operation and they go in and do um, arts and theatre engagement with disadvantaged youths, with people in prison populations and some of the letters I've received from from the participants of what 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 theatre has done, how it's given people confidence and a voice, and about how you know how arts has, has sort of really really um, given people a sense of themselves and 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 where they were lost and they sort of have that that you know that that realization that they they do have passion, they do have a voice, and they have you know, a role to play. Um, and, and I think that, that, that you know, for an organisation which, which for the, I think for the last 10 years has received Australia Council funding to be rejected, um, to not be able to go and do that sort of work. I mean, for, in the scheme of government spending, it is, you know, it's a sneeze um, for a government to be able to support arts organisations like this. So, so I, yeah, so, so that's been really disappointing. Um, we have, and I guess I would make this plug with, with limited success, if there are any arts electorates, uh, arts um, organisations who are listening to this, do contact your local MP. Um, and, and we've been certainly writing a number of letters to the minister directly requesting the minister be aware of certain grants and, and certain grant applications and, and adding support to those applications. Sometimes that helps. It's not an exact science, but, but you know, certainly um, I'm sure there are local members who would be willing to support fantastic local organisations um, in their applications. Um, but, but ultimately, what, what, you know, instead of creating George Brandis's catapult um, or catalyst um, organisation where he, you know, he essentially became the, you know, the, the, the arbiter of different arts funding and then and then Paul Fletcher more recently has created the I think it's called the Rise Funding, where government has more control and, and you know independent agencies like the Australia Council have less control. I think that that's that's bad policy making, and it's you know it's not in the interest of government to be telling artists what they should be creating. Not even not even Roosevelt after the Great Depression, when he was paying artists directly in order to create art, told them what to create. He just gave yeah. the money and said go and go and make art and go and go and be artists and, and work as artists. Um, so I, I don't think that, I don't think it's govern, government's role to, to, um, to do that. And, I, and if you are, I, I think in my sense of the feedback from industry is that they're pretty happy with, with, you know, with, with an organization like the Australia council. I think that it, on the whole, the industry thinks that that's a good model but we need to make sure it's properly funded and that it's not being forced to, to each year increase the bar of and, and small in the, you know, reduce the, um, the group of people who are receiving funding. So, you know, it's, it's, it's certainly not ideal, but, but um, try and contact your local member and, and ask if they would be willing to draft um, letters of request and support to minister that, that, that might be something that, organizations might want to do that's actually really good advice everyone i guess part of our call to action is to not just write the letters but ask for letters of support josh that's such a great idea there's so much that we could talk about but obviously we can't change anything all we can do is keep this conversation alive make sure that people in this industry know that we're thinking of you that you know you are front of mind because 
When things are good, we go to the arts industry. When things that are not great, we go to the arts industry because they make us feel better. Now it's their turn to tell their story. So, look, Josh, I'm so grateful to you for taking the time to have this discussion today. You've given everyone a lot to think about. I very much appreciate it. And obviously, because you've got your constituents, they've really um, touched your heart with their stories. You can sort of see that you actually give a shit. So we're very happy to see that. Thank you so much. And um, I wish you the best in the rest of your lockdown as you guys emerge slowly down there. Thanks. Well, we, we are, we're getting there as proud Victorians. We've done, people have done an amazing job and, um, and our, you know, our, our artists are such a source of national pride, Nikki, and, and we have a, a long history of, of telling Australian stories and, and of, of sh helping shape Australian identity. And I think, to be honest, that, that we often cede that part of the national discussion to to conservatives and or to or to you know to people who want to use national identity for nefarious reasons where in actual fact there are such wonderful things that about our country and about our, our local story and accent and 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 um voice that i think is is you know is worth celebrating and worth hearing and and we we need our artists to be there at the end of this it's it's important for our national identity but it's it's also really important for our economy. So um, it's really my pleasure. Thank you for all of your work on behalf of your industry. And, and I look forward to seeing you in real life, hopefully either in the great state of Victoria or up in sunny Queensland in the not too distant future. Thank you, Josh, for your voice. And let's keep the story going, everyone. See you next time, Josh. <laughs>